I'm Goran Stanković, international cardiologist from Belgrade, Serbia, and it's my pleasure to discuss the results of the EBC main study with my colleagues and friends, Professor David Hildig Smith and Professor Jens Flensted Lassen. Uh, we know that bifurcations are best treated with a provisional strategy, but in the recent guidelines, we have a recommendation for DK crash in the left main. And that's the reason why we uh, discuss today the issue of the new study and new evidence, which may have important impact on the current practice. David, uh, you are the PI of the EBC Maine. So please tell us about the rationale of this study. Thanks so much, Goran. Yes, um, so the study follows on from lots of good studies that were done in non-left main bifurcations. So uh, Cactus, Nordic, BBK, BBC1, et cetera. These studies all looked at non-left main stem bifurcations and showed that the provisional approach was superior to the dual stenting strategy. Uh, and in fact, a relatively poorly appreciated fact is that in the long-term follow-up of two of those studies combined, actually there was even a mortality disadvantage for those who had a two-stent strategy. So of course, you know, as things have moved on, as stenting results have got better and better, as surgeries got less popular, so we moved to the left main. And this has been a long time in the gestation. Uh, and the study rationale and the premise was really to do much the same thing, to take true bifurcations of the left main that were going to be treated with angioplasty and to randomly allocate them either to a provisional strategy or a two-stent strategy. And actually, the, the expectation in many ways has been that um, because of several aspects of left main anatomy, which are probably disadvantageous to putting two stents in, the expectation was perhaps, and the hypothesis was really that perhaps the provisional strategy would be better. Uh, yes, there is frequent misunderstanding when we discuss provisional strategy, making that equal to single stent strategy. But what we would like to promote is a provisional as a philosophy. Please tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, uh, question, Goran, and, and, and exactly in this stage of discussing the study, because when you discuss, should we use one stent or two stent, that's a, a dichotomous way of thinking. But actually, it's a misunderstanding that provisional stenting is only one stent always. It's, as you say, a philosophy that develops stepwise. So, to, to, to say it very, very frankly, if you decide from the beginning to put in two stents, you can only end with two stents in the end. But if you start with one stent, you can stop at every stage during the, uh, the way down the line during the procedure. So the difference is that when you start provisional and fix the first main stent with the main stem problem, then you can actually embark on further stenting in the side brands if needed, or you can leave it alone. And there is several steps in the provisional where you actually are able to stop. Uh, the, the, the beauty of the provisional is that you can fit a tubular stent into a tapered anatomy and open to a side brand and scaffold with a proper technique the, uh, the carina area and, and the roof of the takeoff of the side brands without uh, having the need for the second stent. So that means that when you actually end in a study like this in a provisional arm, you can very well on purpose and by decision end with two stents, but it's still a provisional strategy. And again, just to make it totally clear, when you do it this way, it's, it's very easy to keep it simple and reduce the number of stent and re reduce the uh, complexity of the procedure, reducing dye, x-ray, et cetera, et cetera, and reduce the risk uh, for the patient. Thank you very much, Jens. Uh, Dave, for the two-stand strategy, a uh, choice was left to the operator. So we used the uh, different two-stand strategies up front. Yes, that's absolutely right. I mean, we didn't want to specify a particular strategy, largely because 
people don't do that many two stent procedures and you, you may well have chosen personally that your culotte is the one you like or DK crush is the one you like or T or tap. So we, we left it open to the operator's uh, decision-making. Uh, Dave, what was the design and uh, how we define the endpoints of this study? Yes, so the design was one-to-one -one randomized. It was 31 centers in 11 European countries run by CERC. 450 patients were required in the end, 467 were actually recruited. Um, the primary endpoint was a composite at one year of death, target lesion revascularization and myocardial infarction. Uh, Dave, tell us now a few words about methodology and how the trial was run. Yeah, so this was, this was very much a technical comparison of two techniques. Everything else in the trial was the same. So it was very important that we were very specific about the techniques and how they should be done. Now, Jens has told you already a little bit about the provisional strategy through the trial. And it was important to mention that the POT was mandated, a KISS was mandated. And similarly, in the two stent strategies, we, we didn't specify the actual uh, named techniques. So it could be culotte. Culotte in the end turned out to be the most popular. It could be DK crush, a smaller proportion of DK crush. Could be T, could be tap. But similarly, these were specified according to the consensus documents of the EBC from 2009 to 2015 or thereabouts. And as part of that, it was specifically mentioned that it was very important to have high pressure osteal dilatations at each limb of the bifurcation and a, f a final kiss. And what about imaging? Was there a mention about use of imaging? Yes. So you'll probably remember, Goran, that right at the start, I was really keen that we should have imaging randomized within this study. And I'm, I'm now sorry that we didn't manage to do that. As you know, some people said, oh, they wouldn't do it with. Some people said they wouldn't do it without. Some people said it wasn't reimbursed. So in the end, we had to uh, give that up. But a, th a third of the patients had intravascular imaging. Um, you might think it would have been more. Uh, it's not dissimilar actually to what was seen in TK Crush as well. So, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't mandated. It wasn't pre-specified. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yes, we speak about left main. It's not bifurcation like the others all these technical aspects are even more important. Uh, can you tell us why anatomy of the left main is so specifically different? Well, yes, and, uh, and again, it's, it's, I think it's important to actually look a bit into these things exactly in the discussion here, because the technical aspects is actually more demanding in the left main for many reasons. Uh, there's a takeoff from the aorta, which is uh, a bit perpendicular and actually is oval in shape. So there is, well, a landing zone of a stent that is different for every other bifurcations we have. But even more important, there is a huge dis discrepancy between the diameter of the left main and the LAD and the circumflex, which means that the tubular stent we are using in this setting actually need to taper quite dramatically. And sometimes more than actually is, is covered by the specification of, of, of the certain stent. So it, it's just, important to, to realize that there is much more technical issues and there's much more demand on the technical performance of these procedures in the left main. And it comes both to two stand and one stand techniques. So this actually makes it quite important when we discuss how to treat left main also to discuss the techniques in, in, in very de detailed uh, manners to understand the results. Thanks, and now it's time for the results. Dave, please tell us some about, something about demographics of the enrolled patients. Sure, okay, so um, 467 patients recruited. The age was roughly 70 years, three quarters of them were male, about a third were diabetic, a third had an acute presentation. Uh, the radial approach was used in three quarters and the average syntax score was 22. Thank you. In terms of the procedural flow and the summary characteristics, as Jens has already suggested, of course, the consumables were uh, more used in the two-stem strategy. So for example, 
the number of stents at the bifurcation was more, the stented length was more, the procedure duration was more, fluoroscopy time was more. So all of these, as, as expected, were longer in the two stent procedure. If we look uh, more specifically at what actually happened through the procedure to each uh, group of patients, the adherence to the protocol was very good. Uh, the use of the pot, the use of the kiss, as mandated, was very high. Uh, and I think for me, one of the most interesting features of this study is that despite the fact that one group was getting two stents in every single patient, the other group, the provisional group, only had two stents in a fifth of the patients. So you can see that in some respects, one group was prejudging the issue and the other group perhaps wasn't. It's very similar to our pre, uh, prior study, EDC2, in complex yes. lesions, non left main, it was 16%. Exactly. And yeah. Now we are close to that range also in the left main. Yeah. The moment of truth has come. And I believe that you should uh, tell us what was the primary outcome of this study. Yeah. So the primary endpoint at one year was that death, target lesion revascularization, and myocardial infarction occurred in 14.7% of the patients in the provisional strategy versus 17.7% of those in the two-stem strategy. This was numerically different, but not statistically different. In terms of secondary endpoints, these were the individual components of the primary endpoint plus stent thrombosis. There's no difference in death between the two groups, no difference in myocardial infarction. Target lesion revascularization was interesting. There were 14, which is 6% in the provisional strategy and there were 22, which is nine and a half percent in the dual stent strategy. Again, numerically, but not statistically different. Stent thrombosis was no difference between the two groups. Yes, now when you know the results, how do you feel it may impact the clinical practice? Uh, what is the role of these neutral findings in the contemporary available data? Well, first of all, I'm very, very happy with the trial, and I'm happy that we did such a uh, huge, put such a huge effort into describing the techniques. So we really know what we were working with and, and see how they impact the results. I'm uh, uh, what I it, it, it is a neutral result. Uh, maybe there is a numerical uh, uh, ad, ad advantage for for the provisional, but it's it's difficult to discuss. But if we just say this is neutral then for me, it's a huge support of the keep it simple, safe and swift strategy. Uh, first of all, very easy because you use, it seems that you in the provisional arm use, use less dial, less time, less equipment. Uh, it, it's, it's a quicker procedure and, and so forth. So this is one issue. The other is that it seems also that it's safe to build upon a strategy that don't actually secure the side plans totally upfront. Uh, at, at least it, it does no harm. And actually, again, since we have described the steps so well, it's, it's very, very nice to see that if you actually know your procedure, know how to treat mishaps or thing that goes wrong, then you can do it very, very safely in a stepwise uh, manner. So I'm actually very happy with the result. Yeah, me too. Uh, what I like is that if you would like to start stenting the main vessel first, and then you take this layered approach of complexity, you will end up in 20% of cases with two stent strategy at the end, and you will finalize the procedure following the steps recommending by the European Bifurcation Club in 80% of cases with a single stent and at least up to one year of follow-up, you will have practically neutral result. Uh, Dave, what is your perspective on this study? Yeah, so I think I've had lots of time to think about this, obviously. I think two, two key things. One is the one you just mentioned, if fundamentally in patients, even where patients are those that you might think, oh, we perhaps we need two stents here. 
In fact, in this anatomical group, only 20% of them actually needed that second stem. So that's a strong advocate for the provisional strategy. Um, and secondly, um, I think it's, it's not necessary, therefore, to prejudge the issue. Very commonly at conferences, you see people say, oh, two stems, two stems. It's like, but why say that up front? You can do it sequentially, piece by piece. And sometimes you'll end up with two stents, but sometimes you won't. So I think this study is a really strong advocate for suggesting that the provisional strategy is the strategy of choice for the vast majority of left main stem bifurcation lesions. Thank you very much to both of you. I'm sure that people at EuroPCR 2021 will enjoy your presentation in another session as well as discussion throughout this meeting. Thank you very much for having the opportunity to, to uh, do this interview with both of you. Thanks. Thanks, Goran. Thanks, Goran.